This is the new Logitech Combo Touch keyboard case for the new 2021 iPad Pros. So let's see how it compares against the iPad Magic Keyboard and of course Logitech's Folio Touch. Hey, I'm Jerry. And if you're an iPad user and you prefer iPad keyboard cases, then of course there's the Apple Magic Keyboard. Logitech has made a number of cases, but more so for the smaller 11 inch iPad Pros. And then of course there's things like the bridge keyboards and things like that. But this is the first time that Logitech has given us a keyboard case with the built-in trackpad for the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. New for this combo touch generation of keyboard cases from Logitech is the fact that it can actually separate the case and the keyboard. There is a combo touch case for the 12.9 inch and for the 11 inch iPad Pros from 2021. And inside, you're gonna see that it's actually two pieces. That's right, because for the first time, you can now completely disconnect the keyboard from the rest of the case from Logitech. And if you've seen Logitech's keyboard cases lately, this is pretty much how they look, the same type of material, very rugged feeling, almost like jean or textile feel, I'm not sure what it is, but it feels very good and it's easy to clean and it's pretty durable. Just like other iPad Pro keyboards, it does use the smart connector built into the iPad. So this keyboard is going to be fully powered by the battery in the iPad itself. And that passes through down here. So with magnets and pogo pins, we can then connect the keyboard to the rest of the case like so. And look at that. that actually, that's, wow. That snaps really well. It aligns really quickly and it holds like it's not going to accidentally fall off unless you maybe pick up the iPad case by the keyboard and with the iPad in it. But, but other than that, it feels like a pretty solid connection. Here's the folio touch for the 11 inch iPad Pro and you can see it has a built in kickstand. It's got a flap here that kind of holds the Apple Pencil on and then it pops down and you have the keyboard. And as you can see, these two cases are very similar, except of course the one on the left is for the 12.9 inch iPad Pro and this one, the folio touch is for the 11 inch iPad Pro, but they do have the new version, the new detachable keyboard version, the combo touch for the 11 inch as well. And that starts at $199 and the one for the 12.9 inch iPad starts at 229, I believe. So let's go ahead and toss my iPad in. Just like with the previous cases, you got the poker pins on the back and the camera and that should align. And you should be able to just push this in and there's kind of rubber pieces around the side that are just gonna hold the iPad in for you. And it feels pretty snug, like it's not just gonna come out of here, so you shouldn't have any concerns about losing your iPad. And yeah, these two cases look extremely similar, which is good because the folio touch for the iPad Pro 11 inch is actually very, very good. My only issue with it is that it's a little bit smaller, right? It's a little bit smaller of a keyboard, a little bit smaller trackpad. The new 12.9 inch version has a full-size keyboard and trackpad, which is nice. And what's really good about the Logitech keyboards is that you actually get that full line of function row keys up top. You can actually get to the home button. You can turn your brightness up and down. You can turn the keyboard brightness up and down. You got play, pause, mute, all that stuff. And you can get to virtual keyboard and search and it's all right here and a lock button. So just testing out the keys, like they feel really good. Almost actually, I think they're almost as good as the iPad Magic Keyboard. I think that they're a little bit better than the Folio Touch, but maybe that's just because they're bigger, like I was saying a second ago. But let's try the iPad Magic Keyboard. All right, yeah. So these feel surprisingly similar. That's crazy. So if you're an iPad Magic Keyboard user, you'll know that when you have the iPad in the iPad Magic Keyboard, you can't flip it around and use it as a tablet. There's just no way to do that. With the 11 inch, you can actually fold the whole back around and continue to use your iPad as a tablet if you want, instead of always having it in keyboard form or laptop mode. With the new version of the Combo Touch, you can actually fully just disconnect the keyboard case, reducing the weight, and still use your iPad as a tablet. And then of course you still have the built-in kickstands, so you can just prop it up on a table, watch a movie, watch a video, bring out a PlayStation or an Xbox controller and go to town on some kind of mobile FPS game. Now, of course, you also have the option of just flipping the keyboard around and sitting that on back. So if you try and fold the keyboard back, it's gonna pop off, but you can actually turn the keyboard backwards and fold it back. And now you have the keyboard attached to the case, but of course the keys are hidden and now you have a nice resting area for your iPad to sit on. So on the top of the case, you of course have cutouts for the speakers and the microphones. You have a little button here for the power switch. You have the volume buttons up and down right here. And of course you do have a spot for your Apple Pencil. 
but unlike the folio touch, there is no flap that's gonna hold it on here, so you may still end up losing that in a bag somewhere. On the bottom, we have cutouts for the USB-C port and of course, the two other speakers. And on the bottom, like I said, you have the magnets for connecting the keyboard case and the pogo pins. So after holding this for just a few minutes, the case is actually very good. It's not thick, it's not overly bulky. It feels like it's going to protect, obviously, from scratches, but also small bumps and dings. And I actually really like it. Actually, I wouldn't mind if Logitech just made a version of this case, even without the keyboard. I think that the kickstand is super handy for regular tablet users. And you can go really far back on that. You can go like all the way down and you can use it to draw or type on the on-screen keyboard or whatever you need to do. And it just, there's so many different angles. It's so customizable for whatever you actually need. And if there's glare in the room like that, right, you can just adjust the keyboard stand to get the perfect angle to reduce glare. All right, and just like the iPad Magic Keyboard, you can wake the iPad up by hitting a button or hitting the trackpad, and then with a three-finger swipe up, the Face ID will read your face and you are now in the iPad. You can, of course, two-finger swipe between home screens, three-finger swipe between apps, three fingers to go up, and go up again, and you get to your multitasking screen. And one other thing I've noticed about this is that you can actually click anywhere on this trackpad. So just like on the iPad Magic Keyboard, where you can click anywhere on the trackpad, Logitech has implemented something similar as well, and you can click anywhere you want on the trackpad. And it's a bigger trackpad, so it actually feels a little bit better. Let's go ahead and try out the function keys, which is a real step up over the iPad Magic Keyboard. It's nice being able to just quickly adjust the brightness or something like that. You can quickly search, which I usually just go ahead and do two finger swipe down for search. But you can also change the keyboard brightness. I don't know if you can see that on this camera or not. You can go high. And we can go low. We also have the media buttons, volume up and volume down. You can see the volume changing up at the top of the screen. And if you're inside of an app or looking at the web, you can actually just hit the home button right there. Normally you can just hit command H to go home, but having a button right there is nice too. And of course you can lock it. So all of those buttons feel really good. Let's just do a quick test. This is me type being on the new Logitech. Oop, Logitech. <laughs> I'm not a great typist. Keyboard. Yep, this feels pretty good. Using a full size keyboard with my iPad Pro. And of course, we'll just auto correct that. Perfect. All right, so why would you want this Logitech Combo Touch over the iPad Magic Keyboard? One, it's cheaper, 229 versus 350. Two, you actually get useful function keys on the top, a full row of them. Instead of going into dumb menus to change the brightness of the keyboard, you can just do it right here. And of course you can change the screen brightness, the volume, you get a lock button and the home button. It's really a great experience having function keys on a keyboard. Three, the material is much better. You can see I have a skin on this iPad Magic Keyboard because it just picks up grime and oil and other stuff like nobody's business. This is a much more durable material. It, I think, will last longer. It will look better longer. And four, there's a kickstand. So you can adjust it to whatever angle you want. There's a lot more angle adjustment options compared to the iPad Magic Keyboard. And five, you can fully detach it from the keyboard, go in complete tablet mode without adding that extra weight and bulk to the iPad Pro. So I guess that's it. This is the brand new Combo Touch iPad Pro keyboard case from Logitech. It is $229 for the 12.9 inch version. It is $199 for the 11 inch version. And the 11 inch version works with all of the previous 11 inch iPad Pro. So first, second, and third generation iPad Pro 11 inch and they're available, I guess, today because I got mine today. So let me know below, is this a keyboard case that you're interested in? And do you prefer this Logitech style with the detachable keyboard over something like the iPad Magic Keyboard? Let's talk below. If you're interested in my iPad Pro unboxing and initial tests of the 12.9 inch and the 11 inch, definitely check out this video right over here. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it, hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.